Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for our second webinar on uh, early interceptive orthodontics with Dr. Brock Rondeau. Um, as mentioned, this is the second of two webinars that we uh, advertise to our clients. And, and um, uh, if you're liking what you hear in these webinars, we'd sure love to see you out in person to Brock's live sessions uh, that start in Vancouver beginning April 14th and 15th. So keep those dates in mind and please sign up if you're interested. Uh, Dr. Rondo uh, has an active practice, uh, general practice in London, Ontario. He's a, a general practitioner and he specializes in orthodontics, TMJ and sleep. Um, ProTech, we at ProTech have a long history of working with uh, Brock and attending his lectures and, and uh, we fancy ourselves sort of expert on uh, Brock's techniques. Um, a little bit about ProTech, my name is Jeff Player. I'm the managing partner of the orthodontic division here at ProTech Dental Lab. ProTech is a full service dental lab in Vancouver, uh, British Columbia. And um, uh, we have been specializing in orthodontics for over 40 years. Uh, we've got many, uh, spent many of those years uh, gaining experience working with uh, Dr. Rondo's um, treatment modalities. We're totally familiar with his, the concepts and, and um, what he's teaching to uh, our client base. And our role here at the laboratory is really to help guide you, to answer your questions, um, to help you with uh, treatment planning, record taking, and, um, and provide advice based on our years of experience in uh, working not only with uh, all types of orthodontics, but in particular with Brock. Um, today's session will uh, build on the first by examining some of the tools used for class two correction, including the carrier motion appliance. I'm sure Brock will cover off on some other uh, appliances and techniques as well. Um, so we hope you enjoy this one hour webinar and we do encourage you to sign up for the live in-person um, sessions beginning April 14th and 15th in Vancouver. Uh, you know, I've mentioned this before, there's really no substitute to getting in the room, working with your peers, meeting the laboratory, meeting the supply company, having uh, the question and answer back and forth that happens in that live setting. If you're serious about orthodontics, that is the way to do it. Um, so for uh, today's session, we've done something a little different. Uh, we wanted to um, uh, make sure that everybody could attend on the advertised date of March 23rd, and you are still welcome to do that. But we've also pre-recorded the session to give our clients the option to, to tune in at other times if that works better for their schedule. On that day of March 23rd, we'll still be running and playing this recorded version on that night. Brock and I will att uh, attempt to make ourselves available at the end of that meeting, if we can get our IT connection set up correctly, um, to answer your questions on March 23rd. So that would be the benefit to attending on March 23rd. Otherwise, you're welcome to um, just take this session in at your, at your leisure. So it's not, it's not interactive other than using the question and answer button on the 23rd. Um, you can keep your microphones and, um, and cameras off and we're ready to roll. So over to you, Brock. Okay. Thank you, Jeff, very much. So we're live now and I guess uh, we mm -hmm. can go to the first slide here. Just a moment. Okay. Well, I want to tell everybody, first of all, I'm excited to be here tonight. I just, uh, worked from eight to six and, um, I had six final consultations today and they all said yes to treatment. So, uh, I, it, it's wonderful to be offering orthodontics and TMD and sleep because people want it and um, much more than they want general dentistry, I found. And so that's what's great about what I do. We get appreciated and they all say yes to treatment. Certainly mothers, what, what Jeff is good at is the early orthodontic treatment for children. And uh, the mothers all want their children's malocclusions fixed and they don't want to wait till 13 to all have permanent teeth are out. Think about it. What other medical or dental procedure you have to wait till age 13 to fix? It makes no sense. And, and tonight I just interviewed an office manager. She has an orthodontist working in her office and she's in a corporation. The orthodontist doesn't do early treatment, tells everybody to come back next year and we'll talk, which is a stall technique and only offers Invisalign to the adults. That's so far below what we're doing. It's unbelievable. Plus no no concept of TMJ or anything else. So hopefully you'll really enjoy the course. You'll enjoy working with Jeff Player and, and ProTech. They're a fantastic lab. I think, Jeff, we've been working together for at least 25 years. 
And I'm looking forward to coming back to Vancouver on April 14th and 15th. And hopefully many of you will want to take the course. It's a, it's a hands-on course. We trace CEPHs, we put brackets on, we bend wires, we check cephalometric, we do everything. So I think there's 12 lab exercises that we have to, anyway, so it's a, it's a good course. So let's get going. The first thing, what I wanna do is talk about the carrier motion appliance. Now this is a relatively new appliance. It was developed by Dr. Louis Carrier, and you can see his picture, he's a neat guy. If you get a chance to take one of his courses, you should definitely do it. Um, he's developed a class two appliance that I think is really well accepted by the patients. I also wanna show you tonight how to correct um, simple crossbites with an anterior sagittal appliance. Because I think to start out, you wanna start treating the children because many, many orthodontists are not doing it now. Granted, many are doing it now, but a lot of them are not trained in their in their um, in, in in ortho school to do it, and they have to take courses over and above, which we have to do too. But anyway, this is a neat appliance. Now remember, if you're doing braces, straight wire, if you're doing Invisalign, you have to correct the class two first. Don't put Invisalign or braces on when it's a class two. Fix a class two. And ideally, in mixed dentition, is the best time to do it, right? So there's the appliance, simple appliance. Okay, you can see there's a bar on the upper going from the cuspid to the molar. And you can see there's a bracket on the lower, the lower second molar. And the elastic goes from the hook on the cuspid to the hook on the second molar. And on the lower, we have an Essex retainer, which prevents the lower incisors from flaring. One downside of orthodontics when you put elastics on is you dump the lower incisor. So you got to put that Essex retainer on the lower. So it's a neat, neat appliance. And you can see how simple it is. The patient just puts the elastic on and, and, and puts it on and change the elastic after every meal. You change the elastic after every meal. So three meal, three elastics a day, and it moves the tooth back. And I'll show you how it works. Okay, so we got Jacob here, 16 years old. And um, first of all, he, he probably doesn't want braces. You know, like a 16 year old is, is not as good a cooperator. You're much better to get them at eight, nine, 10, 11, because they're really good cooperators and they really want to get it done. But you got to be careful how you treat him because he wants it done simple and quickly. So there's his profile. He's got a straight profile. Obviously we don't want to move his jaw forward. And on, on the right side, he's got a class one cuspid, class one molar, perfect occlusion, but he's got a deep overbite. And uh, if that was a female, I bet 80% of the time they have TMJ problems, but that's another story. And here he is on this side, he's got a class two cuspid, class two molar. So what are you gonna do? If you put elastics on both sides, you're, you're gonna ruin the good side. And then you gotta just put elastics on this side. So I just wanna distalize that upper side back. Okay, so Carrier says, Dr. Carrier says, the philosophy is to fix the sagittal first. Okay, so correct the class two first and then put braces on or do Invisalign for, the, for class one. You should treat everybody in class one with braces or Invisalign, but fix this first. Now, now Jeff's got all kinds of other appliances. I think I showed you the twin block. If both sides are off, we could use a twin block and bring the whole lower jaw forward, but one side's off, the carrier's perfect. Or you could use an, an appliance to distalize that side, and we've got all kinds of those too we'll show in the course. So the popular size are 23, 20, it's covered up now. I just forget what they are. But 20, there's three of them that are the popular size and they can tell you. Uh, and they have to usually, usually you put two on, but this particular time we just use one. And you get a ruler out and you measure from the mesial one third of the cuspid. They don't go in the middle of the cuspid. The mesial one third of the cuspid wraps around the cuspid to the middle of the molar, okay? And then you etch, the teeth first, right? So just go in and etch the cuspid, remember the mesial one third and the, and the middle of the molar, etch that and then suction it off and then rinse it off and then dry it off and you see where it's etched right there. It's not right in the middle of the, of the cuspid, it's a mid, it's a mesial one third of the cuspid, okay. Then it's very easy. All you do is add the bonding material to the pads and put it on and light cure it. And then we also remember we want to put a, a bracket on the lower second molar. If there's only first molars, we stop at the first molar. But if we go to the second molar, it's better because the, the elastic pull will be longer. 
So we put that bracket on the lower second molar. Okay. Now we used to take impressions, but of course now we don't. Now we have a um, itero scanner and we scan the lower arch. But if you either, you, but remember to put the bracket on first and then do your scan or then use your SX retainer. And um, then you send to the lab and have the lab. Jeff can probably make that in a couple of days and make the SX retainer and send it back to you. Okay, so there it is. You bracket the second molars, SX retainer in the lower, and the upper carrier most appliance on one side. You're all set to go with that. And then all you do is apply an elastic. You put an elastic, it's a six ounce elastic first. Okay, so force one is a six ounce elastic. And it goes from the cuspid to the molar. Very simple. I mean, think about it. That's all a patient has to do is put that elastic on three times a day. In the first month, we use what's called a force one elastic. The six ounce is force one. You lose that, use that for one month. So you can see how easy this would be just to put on elastic and go off. I mean, it's, it's, you can hardly see it. And so the next month, month two, three, and four, usually you only need another three months and it works. Use an eight ounce elastic. So the eight ounce elastic is called a force two. And of course, when you buy these, they send you the whole kit. Okay. And you could buy those from Serum Orthodontics in, um, in from BC. They're, they're located in Calgary, so Serum Orthodontics. So class two molar, three months later, class one molar, class one cuspid. How easy is that? If you can tell me a faster way to do it, I would be very interested. Now, Jeff and I have used appliances to distalize the molars also. But I really like the fact that everything goes back, the cuspid, the two by cuspids and the molar into class one in three months. So now we got class one on both sides. Now all we have to do is straighten the front teeth and fix the overbite. And so what we do is, and we get into braces, and this is really easy. You just tie the cuspid to the molar with stainless steel ligature ties. And you have an arch wire in there. And then you put a power chain from the cuspid to the cuspid to close those spaces in the anterior, keeping your cuspid tied to the molar so that you increase your posterior anchorage. So the cuspid doesn't come forward, the cuspid stays in class one. And then again, a couple of months later, everything looks pretty good. I mean, you got all your spaces closed, your cuspids are still class one, you're using heavier wires to finish the case, get your rectangular wires in the end, and then you're done. <clears throat> and I think that probably took maybe, uh, I'd say 12 months, probably three months in the carrier and probably nine months with the braces. And um, we're charging some around 6,500 now for our cases. And uh, with those spaces in the front and, and the, the malocclusion, the, the parents are quite happy to pay for that. And it was really quick. And this is called a QCM retainer. This is a retainer that has a clear labial bow. And it's much nicer than the traditional Holly retainer. Which, which you can see the wire. In these cases, you don't see the wire, so it's great. And then we always put a lingo bond retainer on the inside. So the lingo bond retainer goes on the inside and then the holly retainer goes on the outside. So it's a great situation. And see how it's indexed or um, it, it, it's, it's, it's hit. Jack, Jeff has a, um, a hair dryer, which, which he doesn't use much anymore. So he uses it now on his appliances here, you know, but his partner, Mike, does use his hair dryer, but they just do that and it, it just does a great job. Okay, so again, class one cuspid, class one molar in the right was like that all the way. And there's the class one cuspid, class one molar in the left and a great finish. So it looks like it, the braces just came off. There's a little bit of bleeding going on there. I must, I must get some newer pictures there. Now I have a book. Early Orthodontic Treatment for Children. Highly recommend you get that book. And actually, if you sign up for the course, you get that free. So it's got 19 cases in there. And today I had a patient come in with a class three problem and I was gonna use an appliance called the Tandem Appliance. And I showed the patient the whole case in the book. How we started out with an, an anterior crossbite, class three skeletal, use the Tandem Appliance, which Jeff does. And I showed him the end of it. And the godfather said, well, that's great. I mean, obviously you showed me you can do it, now do it. 
So it's nice to have that book and nice to learn all the appliances that we, we would learn in the course. I just can't believe the case of that orthodontist working for that corporation, not treating children and doing Invisalign and everybody. I just, I, there's no way he could possibly, nobody in the world can end up with the same results we do with, with just those, those two techniques and not treating the children when they're early, when the malocclusion could be fixed with these appliances and mixed dentition. So it blows me away. Anyway, so you get that book for free. We're starting some mini residencies. I've got them going all over the country now, but we're starting two in Vancouver. We've got 12 dentists that took my courses in, in Vancouver and Calgary and, and Edmonton, and they want to join the mini residency in, in, you know, in, in Vancouver. And we're starting that soon. So if you're interested, you can certainly call us and ProTech will be there at every course to make sure you get the right appliances. And um, so, I mean, there it's hands-on. So we, we start out with lectures the night before for five hours. I show cases and look at your cases because we help you hand-holding. And that's, of course, what ProTech are good at too, right? When, when they take my course and they learn all these different appliances, then they phone ProTech and they get, they get reinforced as to using the right appliance with the right design. And, and they're a huge help. I mean, you have to have them. Without ProTech, you're not going to be able to do this well. This, this data said the best decision you ever made was to take my course. And so we do the case diagnosis that night. Now, what increase can you expect in your income in the first or second year? Well, I think the first year, I mean, the fees now vary in different areas, but certainly in Vancouver, I bet they're probably charging about 10 grand for a case. So if you, if you charge 6,500, you're gonna be well below what the average orthodontist is charging and you're still gonna do quite well. So 20 cases, 6,500, 130,000. The second year, particularly if you train your staff, we also have courses for staff to take simultaneously with the dentist. We also have a staff online course. If you just wanna have your staff sit in their living room with you or at the office and learn, we can do that too. But the staff course is also hands-on. And I can tell you, and Jeff will confirm it, the dentists that train their staff are the ones that make the most money and have the most fun in ortho because you shouldn't be doing it all yourself. You need a team to help you, to take the records, to adjust the appliances, to, you know, do, do well in, in, in Ontario, the hygienists can do everything. They can put the brackets on, the bands, the wire and everything. So there's my room that I give my courses in. That's, that's my boardroom. I always said if I, when I went to my lawyer's offices over the years and they had a beautiful boardroom, I say, when I grow up, I'd like to have a nice room like that. So now I do. And that's where we, we have our courses. And, and you can see on the side, we were showing cases this morning. And then we, we, the dentists come in, they put the brackets on. And that's her assistant who's looking up in the air, but she should be paying attention. And that's my hygienist, Gina, giving them guidance. And there's another guy putting the brackets on, another guy watching. And there's another guy with his thumb up, everything's good. And so they learn. And we show them everything. We tell them, make your mistakes on our patients. Then when you learn and you go back to your office. So the mini residency takes is a two-year program. But I highly recommend that you take the course first and then go and do it hands-on. So that's something you can think about. Talk to Jeff or talk to me about, or talk to Lee about it. Because we got one in Toronto and London and now in Vancouver coming up. We got two of them to start. So let's show you the carrier again. Okay, so you saw the appliance. Now let's show you another patient, a little girl, Julia, crooked front teeth. And she's 12 years old, right? Now she could have been treated earlier if we'd seen her. But you know what's happening in a lot of practices. First of all, dentists are not trained to do ortho. So what do they do? They send to the orthodontist. And the orthodontist, if he doesn't do early treatment, says, come back when all your permanent teeth are up when you're 12 years old. Well, that's, that's okay if you just got crooked teeth, but if you got crooked jaws or you have no room for all the teeth, you need to go in earlier and, and make room for the teeth with expansion appliances. And in session one, I showed you those. I showed you the fixed ones. I showed you the removal ones. Okay, so she's got prominent cuspids. Now, there's no mother that I've ever met that would not want their daughter treated right away for that. They want their daughter to have straight teeth. And I've found mothers will pay more for their kids than they will for themselves. 
because when I started out, I was doing general dentistry and adding ortho to my practice. So I can remember like it was yesterday, having a mother come in and me telling her, well, you need a bridge because you're missing a tooth on the bottom. So the back tooth is going to move this way and the front tooth is going to move this way and you're going to be in real trouble. You won't be able to chew. It'll be awful. And it's going to be like $2,500. And the mother says, there's no way I'm going to spend $2,500 on my mouth for a bridge. So forget it. So then I walked in the next room and their little girl had a, a malocclusion like this with eye teeth sticking out all over the place. I said to the mother, well, I know you can't afford this because you couldn't afford it in the other room. She said, are you crazy? You're not very smart, are you, Dr. Rondo? I will pay whatever it takes to fix my daughter's smile. So if it's 6,500, we're gonna start. Because that the parents wanna do what's best for their kids. And I know you people that have or parents feel the same way. You wanna help your kids as much as you can. And you wanna give a girl self-esteem. She wants to have a nice broad arch and she wants to get those teeth lined up. So again, she's class two molar, class two cuspid. Remember the upper cuspid has to fit between the lower cuspid and the first bicuspid. So that upper cuspid has to go back, okay? So there's other ways to do it, but let's show you the carrier way. Her overjet's five millimeters. So we'd like to maybe move the uppers back a little bit and maybe have the jaw move forward a little bit, but get that cuspid in class one. So remember, do the sagittal first. Correct the molar relationship first. Don't line up the teeth and then put on heavy rectangular wires with elastics and try to fix the sagittal first, which is what most of us were trained to do initially. No, fix the class one molar, class one cuspid first, then put the brackets on. Now they also have them clear. So here's, here's a carry most appliance, it's clear. And so you would put that on an adult, adult. So if you had an adult come in, you'd use the clear. You could also use clear brackets. So they would hardly see it. They just see that one elastic. So really they're, they come in all different shapes and sizes. So this, cus, this patient has, now remember, the carrier goes from the cuspid to the molar, okay? But make a note, if the cuspid is badly rotated, it's not gonna fit. So sometimes if the cuspid's badly rotated, you have to, you have to fix the cuspid first. So in this particular case, we put brackets on first, to line up the cuspid and make it straighter and then put the carrier on. Okay, so again, class one cuspid, sorry, class two cuspid, class two molar. So she started, I always love this. They want clear brackets, but then they put these colored ligature ties on so they can see them. So anyway, that's what you wanted. So we would have clear brackets or regular brackets in our practice. We charge a little more for clear brackets, maybe $500 more because they cost us more and the patients perceive them as they're more valuable anyway. So we charge them a little extra for the clear brackets and we put those on maybe for three or four months just to line up those cuspids so we could put the carrier on. So, and, and again, you could have used the liners for this. You could have used braces for this and either one would work for phase one. And then we need to get the class two correction with the carrier motion appliance. So again, measure from the middle of the, Middle of the molar to the one third of the cuspid, mesial one third of the cuspid. Now remember, if you put that on there and they don't fit, well, you can't do it, use it. And you know, they have to be able to fit. So that's why sometimes you have to start with straight wire before you use this. Okay, so there it is. So the arm is the mesial one third of the cuspid and there's the hook down to the, in this case, it only went to the first molar because she was 12 and her second molars were just erupting. And remember, you always put an Essex retainer on the bottom to prevent the lower incisors from dumping forward. That's a no-no in orthodontics. So there, remember, you put the, the brackets on first, then you scan the lower arch, send it to Jeff at ProTech, and they'll make that Essex retainer to fit over that bracket. And it comes back, I know, very shortly from them because they've got great service. And, and if you need it quickly, they'll do it. So in other words, you don't put the elastics on till you get the Essex retainer in, okay? So you can put, you can put the carrier on. And, and actually, I took a course from an orthodontist friend of mine, and he said, the best time to start an ortho case is when the patient says yes to the treatment. So if you present the case, the patient says yes to the treatment, 
I recommend, and he recommends putting the, putting the carrier right on that day. Put the bracket on the molars that day and give the patient um, the financial agreement and get them to give you a down payment that day. Then they're into the treatment. They're, if their roof breaks or leaks the next day and they say they can't afford ortho, well, they can't afford ortho because they've already paid the down payment. So start that case as soon as you can. Now, first, obviously, you'd have to do the records first. But, you know, that's that, that's what a lot of orthodontists are doing. They start in the case when the patient says yes, and it's a smart move um, from a financial standpoint and a marketing standpoint. So, again, your force one elastic goes on for the first month only. Okay. It's a six ounce elastic force one that comes with the system. Okay. And that's on both sides now. And I left the brackets on the anterior teeth with the clear brackets because I want to keep them straight. So we're all set to go there. So remember the first month, six ounce elastic one month, second, third, and fourth month, force two elastic, eight ounce. And remember, you change them after every meal, three times a day. And they really work well. I mean, you can see how simple this is. I mean, this is really a simple system. It looks like for some reason we took the wire out there. But I mean, all they do is every day. Now they would take the elastics off to eat. They would take the lower Essex retainer out to eat. And they would eat, brush their teeth and then put on the elastics and put back the Essex retainer and off they go. Very, very simple. And in three months, we're in class one. I mean, very simple. Again, if you can show me a faster way to do it when you're gonna get maximum patient cooperation, because the patients will cooperate with elastics early in the treatment, no problem. But if you put the braces on and then you put the elastics on after the first year, when they're a little burned out, you won't get the cooperation level. So that's why we like to use the elastics right in the beginning to get that correction. And remember, you wanna go from class two cuspid to class one and class two molar to class one as soon as possible. Just do it. Do the sagittal first, sagittal correction first. That's a different philosophy than what we were taught. And also, I want you to treat. If you're going to treat in, in clear aligners or Invisalign, get to class one molar, class one cuspid as soon as you can. Either using appliances that we'll be teaching you in the course or the carrier most appliance we'll be teaching you also. Okay. Now, they, if you go online, the other thing I do is they, they got tremendous stuff online for all kinds of children to look up. So I give them, I wrote down a piece of paper, go look up class two motion carrier appliance and look at the different colors and look at the videos and just tell me what you think. And of course, they watch those great videos and they say, I want that. You know, it's on TV. I want it. Now, this is, again, how it works. This is kind of neat. I want you to take a, a look at the picture on the left. And you'll see a measly rotated molar, okay? I think it's 81%, <clears throat> excuse me, of all class two cases have a measly rotated upper first molar, okay? So we got to fix that. And the carrier does that, okay? If you've got a measly rotated upper first molar, you can, it's all, almost impossible to get that molar in a class one molar relationship. So that's where the carrier really comes in. It's very important, okay? So look at the photo on the right that you can see once the carrier goes in and that molar rotates distally and it won't over rotate. So that end is quite expensive, but it's fantastically designed because it'll just do, it'll correct it to the exact right position and then stop. Now, the other key is I want you to look at the space on the left-hand photo, distal to the lateral, there's no space. And then look at the right-hand picture and you'll see a space. That means that side's going back. If you don't see the space, they're not wearing the elastic, they're not cooperating. You always see the space, okay? So it's kind of an uprighting of the molar, it's kind of a rotation of the molar and a slight distalization of the molar. It's actually three things. Distal rotation, which I just showed you. 
upright in the molar if that upper first molar is measly rotated, measly inclined, and a little distalization. So it's not three millimeters distalization, but it moved you back from class two molar to class one, which is what you want. The sooner you get to class one molar, class one cuspid, the better. So one end is, is the ball and socket joint, which goes on the molar. And the other end is the cuspid with a hook. Okay, there's the cuspid with the hook. And so this works. Now remember, if your molar is correct, it's not gonna move it more. But a lot of times your molar is class two and it's measly rotated. And this is really great to fix it. Again, here's the girl with her wire in there with all the different colors. So force one elastic first month. Space should open mesial to the cuspid or distal to lateral is conformation of elastic wear. And remember force two elastics at the second, third and fourth month. And usually after even three months, I get a class one cuspid. Again, I just don't know a faster way to do it. And if someone can show me a faster way, I'd like to see it. But this is so good. Cooperation level is so good, so high. Patients really like this appliance. So in our particular case, a space did not open this to the lateral. And it was because the cuspid was so badly rotated that no space opened up. But the cuspid did go back. And, and, uh, and this is about the only case you'd ever see where the lateral, there wasn't a space created, but it was because you got a badly rotated cuspid that was measly inclined. But you can see it worked beautifully. So we started with class two cuspid, class two molar. Four months later, we got a class one cuspid, class one molar. Okay, but remember, we start with braces first for maybe three or four months. And then we did this. The other thing I want you to watch is look what happened to the deep overbite. We had a deep overbite, which I think last time I showed you, we corrected with a riconator and composite buildups. But the carrier, because the cuspid was, was so high, we extruded it, we brought it down, and I believe that opened the bite. And maybe the class two elastic erupted that lower first molar and opened the bite. But at any rate, the bite's open, and it's really a great thing to have happen. You get the molar relationship corrected, you get the cuspid relationship corrected, and you get the deep overbite corrected and the overjet corrected. I mean, that's fantastic. And that was what, eight months. Again, I'd like to see an easier way to do it. I haven't been able to find one yet. So there the patient was class two cuspid, class one cuspid, prominent cuspids, deep overbite, normal overbite. Now the cuspids are a little bit extruded. If you look at the cuspid on the right, right side of your screen, it does look like that cuspid's a little bit extruded. But when you go back in with the, with the brackets, the cuspid will intrude a little bit. But I mean, that's really a neat thing to have happen. A lot of good things happened in eight months there. So, Again, we had high cuspids, the cuspid extruded. We had a class two cuspid, class two molar in this. Look how much the, mold, the cuspid's off. That upper cuspid is way forward. It's got a long way to go to touch that lower first by cuspid. So remember, we started with the clear brackets first because we couldn't put the carrier motion appliance on that cuspid that was rotated. We had to straighten it a little bit. And then we put it on. And remember the force two elastic was on month two, three, and four. Rarely do we have to have it on more than four months. And there it is, perfect. And I, what I said too is, that, look, we corrected the overjet of five. We corrected the, the, the deep overbite with a simple little bar going from cuspid to molar, a bracket on the lower first molar and an Essex retainer and wearing elastics. I mean, wow, kind of neat, kind of neat. High cuspid, cuspid's back in position. Deep overbite, normal overbite. I mean, that's a really simple way to correct an overbite and an overjet and get your cuspid and molar in class one. So we would charge 6,500 for that. And we would charge 500 for the records. 
And again, if you've never experienced early orthodontic treatment for children, I highly recommend it because they always say yes to treatment. I remember I, as I, I felt like a salesman when I was trying to talk a patient into a bridge or a crown, you know, because it was, it was fairly expensive, right, for them. I mean, they're coming up with thousands of dollars, and, um, but they don't flinch at all when you tell them what the orthodontic treatment is going to cost. They just, they just said, when do we start? That's my, that's my daughter. When do we start? Fees are not even a consideration. So the overjet was five. Now the overjet is one. Again, I mean, really simple. But again, we were helped with the braces too. The braces were definitely a help. And, and I know in the first session, I talked mostly about functional appliances and not a lot about braces, but really brackets are really simple. They pretty well go in the middle of the clinical crown and you put the wire in and the wire straightens the teeth. I mean, it's not difficult. So in Ontario, it was always only hygienists that could do ortho. But the orthodontist managed to talk to our dental board and talk them into allowing assistants to take a three-day course. So my dental assistant took a three-day course, three days. And she's put it on all the brackets and all the wires and the bands after three days of training. Right. So if the dental assistant can learn it very quickly, honestly, you'll learn it too, because we teach that in the course. Very simple. And the brackets are about what seven dollars a piece. They don't cost a lot. And the wires are not expensive either. So I mean it's 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 I think if you get into orthodontics, you will make money. And I think I initially went into it because I was going to make more money. Because I thought, okay, I could do crown and bridge in one room. I could do, we could do hygiene in another room and ortho in another room. I got three rooms going and I'd be all set and the staff can do most of it. But now I, I it's not the money now, it's the satisfaction that, that you can create beautiful smiles and straight teeth and self-esteem and everything else and everybody thanks you. And there's no selling, it's just presenting. You present the problem and the mother says, let's go. Someday I think I must tell her mother it's going to cost ten thousand and see what she says. She'll probably say yes, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, so that's good. Everything looks pretty good there. Now, Thomas Shipley is an orthodontist. He's the guy that actually told me when he was at my course in Las Vegas that the best thing to do is to put. Um, the carrier motion appliance on the first appointment. As soon as the patient says yes to the treatment, you go ahead and do the records. He go the records, and then he would. And we need good records. That's the the other thing about my course. The um, they're fantastic records. You'll never have a problem with the dental board if you fill out my charts. The charts twelve pages long, twelve pages. Okay, and we teach you how to do that in the first session. And you need to take a CEF and you learn how to trace the CEF and you need to take a Panorex and you need to take study models and you need to take photographs. And we teach you all those things. But anyway, so he says, take the records, put the carry most appliance on, put the bracket in the lower molar, scan them, bring them back in a week, put in the Essex retainer, put on the elastics and go. But they'll pay when the carry most appliance goes on, even the bar. I mean, they're ready to go. So he's an orthodontist and he's concerned about the temporal mandibular joint. We were concerned because I think what happens when you distalize the cuspids back, you also get a little advancement of the, of the lower jaw. Okay, you get both. Okay, and that's what corrects the malocclusion. So he did a CBT study on the carrier most appliance looking at the condylar position and the airway. Okay, so here you can see. The airway on the left, you can see that little airway on the, the left-hand side, just behind the molars, front of the ear. And then on the right-hand side is after you use the carrier most appliance. And you can see that the airway opened considerably. He says a 40% increase. Now, my newest course is called Airway Orthodontics because we're very concerned about everything we do opening that airway. And that's why I'm deadly against bicuspid extractions as a routine basis. 
because you're definitely closing off the airway because you're retracting the teeth back. You're pushing the teeth back, back, back. You're pushing the tongue back and you're closing the airway. And not only are you causing TMJ problems in many, many cases, but you're closing the airway. And the more you close the airway, the more they're gonna have snoring sleep apnea. And the apnea is a, is a very dangerous situation. You know, high blood pressure, strokes, acid reflux, cancer, heart attacks, on and on and on and on. It's just unbelievable. Now we teach a little bit about that in the course. So my course is eight sessions or four sessions, eight days. We do a little bit on TMD for beginners. We do a little bit on sleep for beginners, but it's mostly functional appliances and, um, and straight wire and easy cases. I don't want you to be an orthodontist. I don't want you to do the difficult cases. I want you the simple cases. I want you to treat the children in your area that maybe nobody else is treating. And remember, if you have a child that's got a malocclusion and you say to the mother, look, the upper jaw is too narrow, we're gonna widen it give her a nicer smile. Do you think that mother's going to go somewhere else? Certainly not. First of all, she thinks your fee is less. Secondly, she knows you in your office. So she's not going anywhere else. She's going to stay with you. All you did, all your patients like you or they leave, right? So they all, they all like you or they go somewhere else. So all those patients in your practice like you and they trust you and just will do what you recommend. So also I'm very into condylar position. If the condyle, when the patient bites in their back teeth, is up and back too far, then that causes temporomandibular joint dysfunction when the condyle presses on the nerves back there, okay? So he's founding that on average, and you can see the difference between the condyle on the left and the condyle on the right, there's more of a space. He's saying on average, it moves a millimeter. Well, that's fine for me. A millimeter away from the nerves and blood vessels to get rid of the pain is worth it. So again, that's another patient. You can see the airway increased at least 40% and the condyle moved down and forward a millimeter. So again, the airway increased. Condyle doesn't look like it moved as much in that case. But he says on average, he did seven cases. It moved an average of one millimeter. I took a picture when there was a guy sitting in the front row here as he was lecturing at, uh, at one of my meetings. I wanted to get these pictures. So. Shipley says the condyle move, he's an orthodontist that does mostly carry motion appliances and braces and Invisalign, okay? But he tries to get to a class one molar, class one cuspid before he puts the braces on or does Invisalign, okay? So the condyle moved down to four to a millimeter, airways increased 40% or more. Study was only on seven patients. He's a clinician, he's not a researcher. And he, he did the CBT study looking at the, at the condyles. He did um, sleep studies on the patients. And he found that that was, that was perfect. He's really happy with the appliance and so am I. So Jack Trout wrote a book, Differentiate or Die. And I think with the competition that's out there these days, I mean, they've got so many dentists in my town of London. I mean, every corner has got a dentist. I'm so glad that I've diversified my practice because I don't wanna just be doing regular general dentistry. There's a lot of competition. So in my, in my city of London, Ontario, there's about 400 dentists, 400,000 people. And, and, and there's only a few of us who are doing early orthodontic treatment for children and TMJ, treating TMJ patients and snoring sleep apnea. So I'm very busy. I get patients from all over Ontario coming here because a lot of dentists don't want to treat, do not want to treat TMD problems. But we're not going to talk about TMD now. We're just going to talk about this. But I will teach you a little bit about TMJ so you don't get into trouble and you can refer out the difficult cases. Okay. So four things you didn't learn in dental school. Or the dogs for children. Even though 75% of children have malocclusion, it's not taught in dental school. And also 75% of adults have a malocclusion. A lot of them have just crooked lower front teeth. TMD, one third of the population has TMD. When I tell a patient, one third of you have the problem and medical doctors and dentists don't learn anything about this in dental or medical school, they're just amazed. They just, they can't believe it. It is unbelievable. Snoring and sleep apnea, 
50% of men over 50 snore. And at least 20% of the adult population, in my opinion, has sleep apnea. Sometimes it's mild, sometimes moderate, sometimes severe, huge numbers that we could help. I really think dentists need to help treat these patients. Where are they going to go? They don't want that CPAP holds over their nose, which the medical profession want to give everybody. Nobody wants that. They want oral appliances. So for mild and moderate cases, oral appliance are number one. For severe cases, they got to have that hose over their nose, the CPAP. But boy, they don't like that. They'd rather have my oral appliances. And Jeff has a great number of oral appliances that he makes for you. And we also have a course on snoring and sleep apnea online. And uh, we could certainly make that available to you and then get your appliances from Jeff from Protec. Uh, the other thing that we didn't learn about is how to manage a practice. Here we've got, you know, a huge practice and, and, and a huge business, and we have no training. Nobody trained us to train staff or how to treat staff or how to manage staff or how to set up systems in the office. It's unbelievable. So I really encourage all of you to try and find a consultant to work with to help you out because that's something we need to know. We should have got that before we borrowed a million dollars to build a practice or buy a practice. So that's my consultant, Scott Manning. He's a great guy. He teaches mostly in the States, but also in Canada. And certainly if you need information on him, I can give it to you. I love it. He says, don't focus, focus on the economy, concentrate on your economy. What's your economy? Your economy is your practice. You worry about your practice. Don't worry about inflation or, or anything else. Just concentrate on making your practice go by treating your patients like gold and your staff like gold. I love this. He says, successful people do what unsuccessful people don't feel like doing. Well, guess what? Some people are not watching this video tonight. Some patients got information on it. Some dentists getting said, I want, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. But some of you are saying, you know what? I really should make an effort to, to improve my practice. I really should do it. Um, you want to be proactive and not reactive. If you're reactive, you're waiting until things go wrong. And then you try and fix them. But if you're proactive, you fix them before they go wrong and you get busy before you're not going to be busy. Hopefully, you'll all be busy. If you're doing new things, adding new things to your practice, you'll be busy. Okay, well, that's a nice place in Hawaii. I think I'd like to go back there. Okay, so now I want to talk to you. So that's the carrier. I really think it's an excellent appliance and, and it has a certain uh, indication. Now, I will tell you, if you have a large overjet, though, I don't think the carrier is the best appliance for large overjets. If you have a very large overjet in a child, you need an anterior sagittal. And we teach that in session two. If you have a really large overjet in an adult, there's a call, an appliance called the Mara appliance. Anybody over age 12. And we teach that in session four. And, and ProTech makes those and, and they do a great job. So again, for larger overjets, I think the appliance of choice would be under age 12, you want to go anterior sagittal. Over age 12, the Mara. And you'll get excellent notes. My course manuals are 250 pages each with colored photos of cases in there. So let's talk about this. Now, what's happening here? There's my boardroom. There's my staff writing examination. Why are they writing examination? Well, I believe in training them and giving them tests all the time. And uh, so they're all writing a test. For instance, if you are going to incorporate this into your office, okay, and how are you going to have your staff relate to the patient who phone up and say, I understand that Dr. Rondo is not an orthodontist. How come he's doing orthodontics? He's not even a specialist. You better tell your staff how to answer those questions. Or do they know the difference between orthopedics and orthodontics? Do they um, know the functional appliances that we use? Do they know? Braces. I mean, you need to spend some time training them. Now we have a, I, I send them all to a course, four day course, which is great, which my, my hygienist teaches. But if you don't have that, you're going to have to train them. And I can send you the tests that you can give them and then, and then get them to, you can answer the questions together. The ones they miss, you can help them with. I can send you the answers too, if you want. 
So they all did the test. They're all buddies. They all got 95%. They all got 95% of the test. So they're outstanding. And there she is with their 95%, very happy, okay? And they're talking about an early treatment, two-phase treatment, and all these all the answers there anyway. And there she is answering the questions. And she's answering the questions. And they all got a bottle of wine. I mean, no one should have to pass a test without getting an award. So they all got a nice bottle of wine and they all feel pretty good about it. And they get an hour of CE credits because they spent an hour writing the test. Now, why I do this is that Scott Manning, my, my consultant, used the analogy. A football team practices 95% of the time and they play 5%. They only play three hours a week, right? So obviously in football, they think practice is pretty important. What happens in a dental office? Think about it. We're probably treating patients maybe more than 95% of the time. It depends on your office. And maybe we train the staff 5%. That's kind of not the best. Most corporations would think that's a lousy way to do business. And you need to motivate your staff and educate your staff because they're the ones that motivate and educate your patients. Okay. So anyway, that's, think about that. You should be having weekly meetings, in my opinion. Most offices have monthly meetings. We have weekly meetings. It just, they bring in their lunch and they sit and, and we talk and then we, we talk and we have lunch at the same time. And um, it just works. We just need that time to talk about how we can improve the office. And this is what Scott Manning said. Remember the key to your success is to try and match management skills with your clinical skills. Now, most of you are taking this course because you're concerned about your clinical skills. Well, I can give you some tips along the way that I've used to help my, to help my, my practice and that he's given me. So anyway, I think you need to think about management skills and clinical skills. Okay. So what about class threes? So let's show you two last cases with class threes, okay? First of all, get in your mind that most class threes in mixed dentition are underdeveloped maxillas and normal mandibles. And you take an underdeveloped maxilla and make it normal. That's how you're gonna treat them, simple, okay? So there's a guy, just look at him. He's got an underdeveloped maxilla. 80% are underdeveloped maxillas. And those are the ones that functional appliances do a fantastic job for. Those are the ones, if you leave them, are going for orthognathic surgery if they end up in the wrong office. Now, in our office, we treat them without surgery. But in a lot of offices, if they're not treated with a functional appliance, and you have to ask yourself, is the orthodontist in your area using functional appliances? Is the orthodontist in your area that you refer to, are they doing early orthodontic treatment? Now, some are. Some are very advanced and they've taken some extra courses over and above graduation, like you are doing, but some are not. So that's a huge opportunity for you. Now, to be honest, when I came to London and started doing this 35 years ago, not very many orthodontists were doing early treatment, but now more and more are starting to do it. So you have to find out whether the orthodontist in your area is doing it or not. But at any rate, the patients don't want to go to him. They want to go to you. You're their dentist. You're the one they trust. Okay. But if you don't want to do this, let's say you say, I don't want to do it. That's okay. But if you see a case, try to find an orthodontist or a general dentist who will do the case for you because you want what's best for your patients. Now, very rarely, certainly in children, do we ever have this situation. This is an adult where you've got a prominent mandible. Prominent mandibles are surgical cases. So you don't treat those. You send them out for a specialist. Use the orthodontist for the specialties. He's a specialist. He or she's a specialist, okay? They're good at surgery, we're not. Send them out. But most cases are underdeveloped maxillas. You wanna develop the maxillas so you don't extract heat. You want to correct the anterior crossbite. I'm going to show you two little cases, easy case with anterior crossbite. You want to increase the upper lip support. You don't want a deficient upper lip. You want to prevent recession of the lower incisor. Here's a patient, 
who had recession of the lower incisors, all because of the crossbite. Every time that patient closes, she hits those lower incisors and pushes them forward and causes uh, recession. You don't want that. You, wanna, you have to open the bite and prevent that. And you have to move those front teeth forward. Okay. So here's what we did in that case. We built up the molars at the back and we did an anterior sagittal to move those front teeth forward. And that's an anterior sagittal. And you can see what we did. It's got a double Adams class, we call it. There's a clasp on the first molar and the second primary molar. First molar, second primary molar, and there's two screws at the back in the molar area, and the cut is distal to the laterals. So you turn those screws twice a week, and that whole front part goes forward, and it's fixed, it's, it's fixed in a couple of months, but you have to open the bite. So you to, we use composite, looks like we use blue on one side, and then the patient, I think what happened is my assistant was used to putting blue on lower permanent second molars. And I think I went to lunch and after lunch came out and said, what's going on here? So then we decided to put um, uh, a white composite filling on the other side. That's why one side's blue and one side's white. So we fixed the crossbite. And this is permanent dentition now, all the teeth are erupted. But look, the gingival tissue improved tremendously. I mean, we had recession in the beginning and with proper function, the gingival went back to normal. That's fantastic. I mean, you can't tell that there was gingival recession at all. And he came back like this, and, and the mother said, says, you need braces? And I said, well, how much money do you have? She said, what do you mean? I said, well, look, if you got money and other kids you got to spend the money on, this is a pretty nice result. Maybe you can intrude those front teeth a little bit. And I guess the, the upper left lateral is a little bit crooked, but I don't think the patient ever came for braces. I said, you know what? The teeth aren't that bad, and the mother wasn't that wealthy. So from there, look at the recession. To there, no recession, neat. But you don't want that to happen. You don't want the patient to have recession and have the, the gingival, gingival recession. You don't want that because otherwise we couldn't fix it. That would be a gingival graft and that's very expensive and very painful when they take, you know, the way they do it. Okay. Oh, there's another picture of why, isn't that gorgeous? Okay, two little cases, okay? So here's a guy with an anterior crossbite. Look at him. Yeah, you can see the crossbites on the upper right. There's this crossbite, upper right. Okay. Look at the gingival margins, they're uneven. Okay. And um, we need to fix that. There's also no, no room for the centrals there very well, are they? Centrals aren't aren't very well lined up. When and there's we wonder if there's room for the for the laterals. If you look at the uh, the lower second primary lateral on the right side uh, there's one behind that and there's no room so there he is now in our course we teach you how to take photos so the first photo was not smiling smiling um, uh, profile right lateral frontal left lateral upper and lower occlusals okay so you need to take a sap you need to take a panorex for all cases okay so the anterior sagittal has got a deep overbite. So obviously we have to open the bite. You can't move that upper right central forward unless you open the bite. It won't work. So again, I prefer you could make the appliance. Jeff could make the appliance with you with posterior pads on the appliance if you want. Or I like the buildups because they're on permanently and they can't take them off. The problem with an appliance with just the pads, they got to take the appliance out to eat and they have to take it out for sports. So while they're taking it out eating for sports, it's not working. And the, and the two still in crossbite. So I prefer the buildups because it's permanent and you know exactly what's going on. Okay. So there we, we put blue on him. We give him the choice. Do you want blue or do you want white? Well, this guy wanted blue. So he gets blue. And look at the lower uh, lateral on the lingual. So you take out the primary lateral and hope that the tongue pushes it forward or we could straighten it later. So he likes the Montreal Canadiens. So you'd love the Vancouver Canucks. And so you could get Jeff to make the Vancouver Canucks and put it on the appliance for you. So again, we need good retention in the posterior. So we've got double Adams class is my favorite. So Jeff can always help you 
with the design of the appliance. But I tell everybody, you design it first, send it to ProTech, ask for a jab. He's got another couple of guys in there, Mike, that, that's really good at helping design and ask them what they think of the design. But remember, if you're gonna move forward, you gotta have some good posterior anchorage. So put Adam's class on the first permanent molar and the second primary molar. You got the cusp, remember, back, the two, the two, the two screws, sorry, back. And you see how the arrow is there showing how the screw goes forward? You just put your little key in there and turn it all the way and take it out. And do that twice a week, every Wednesday, every Saturday. So we show you how to do that in the course. Easy, easy, easy. Okay, and that'll fix that in a couple of months. So look how the screw opened up. See those posterior screws on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, how those screws have opened up and they'll move the front teeth forward. Remember, you put the cut distal of the lateral because you want to put the four anteriors and have all the posteriors as posterior anchorage. You want the posterior anchorage in the back, good, strong posterior anchorage, and then the front teeth will go forward. So that's the way you do it. Never put the cut distal to the cuspid. Always put the cut distal to the lateral. Again, you would draw that on one of their prescription pads at ProTech, and then you'd send it to Jeff or Mike and say, I want you to tell me if you like my design. And they will tell you whether they like the design or whether they, you know, like, let's say you decide to put it on the first deciduous molar. And they think that, okay, well, this patient could be losing that too soon. You better not put it on that too. Take an x-ray and see, but they may recommend move the class back. Okay, so that's it. Very simple appliance. He's got the buildups. Now, remember, the other way, the other thing you do is that if you don't have pads on the upper, the lower first permanent molar will erupt. So you're correcting the deep overbite by having the lower first molar erupt and you never take down the buildups. You leave them on because the, the, the first and second lower bicuspids will erupt to that same level because you're establishing a new occlusal plane. Really neat, really easy. So again, that's correct in three months. I mean, it looks good, easy. And what did I do? Had the patient come in every month and make sure they're turning the screws. Make sure it's fitting properly. Make sure it's all oral hygiene is good. It's done mostly by my team. And I go in the room and just say, how are things going? And they tell me everything's great. He's, he's, he's brushing his teeth. He's wearing his appliance. He's turning the screws. It's fantastic. And look at the gingival margins. Look at the uneven gingival margins on the left. And look at the beautiful gingival margins on the right. There was no braces. That was just strictly that appliance. Getting that tooth at a crossbite and getting proper, proper function. So again, we corrected the crossbite in, in three months. Easy, easy, easy. There it is, and you can see how it's corrected. Now, sometimes if the arch is narrow, we'll do a three-screw anterior sagittal. But in this case, the arch wasn't narrow because we've got room for the laterals. Remember, that's the rule I told you in session one. If you have room for the permanent central and lateral incisors, you don't have to expand. Otherwise, you have to expand. Okay. We didn't have to expand because there's room. Remember, there has to be room for the upper permanent central lateral incisors without extracting the primary canines. So this course or this seminar that I'm giving, webinar, is, is, is going to be, is going to be uh, videotaped. So it might be something you might want to show your team. If I was going to get into this again, I got into it 35 years ago, and they didn't have videos like this to watch, I can tell you that. But if I was going to get into this, I would, I would schedule a meeting. Probably show them the first one, because that was really more functional appliances and early treatment. I would schedule a meeting at lunchtime and say, hey, I'm thinking of expanding my practice into helping children. I want you guys to watch this video with me. So I would recommend you pay for lunch. You don't pay them their wage because they're going to get an hour of C credit, which they need for their license anyway. And just schedule an hour and a half and have them watch it for an hour. The very end of that, go around the room and ask all your staff members individually what they thought of it and whether they thought it would be neat to incorporate that into your office. And that you'd have to take some courses and they take some courses, but they would increase, we'd be able to help more patients. And of course, conversely, we'd also be able to make 
some more money and just check to see their attitude. Because if my staff would love anything new, we just met a myofunctional therapist in town and she's come to my, my do lunch and learns twice and they want to see more. My team is just geared for new stuff, new information. Anything that's going to help our patients look better. So just see what kind of a team you've got. See if they're into differentiating or dying or whether they want to really help your practice or, or, they're, or they're on board with you. Because if you want to do this, they're on the train or they're not on the train. If they're not on the train, you may want to make a change. That's what I think. So we charge 2,500 for that. So we did four buildups, which take, you know, 20 minutes. And we can show you during the course how to do that. And uh, we've got videos to show you how to do it. And it's 2,500 for one appliance. The lab fee, I don't know what Jeff charges for those. Maybe a couple hundred bucks for the lab fee. And the records are 500. So, I mean, you do very well, you know, doing these cases. They're very cost effective because the, the team or the staff of the other room are doing the work. You're just going in to say hi. So again, three months, it's all done. And so he's, he's really in good shape. And then we did brace on him for 12 months. So he had that done when he was age eight. Then we just waited until all his permanent teeth are up. Because if you've got, if you've got room for the teeth and you've got normal overjet overbite, you just wait till all the teeth come in. And then they came in a little crooked in the bicuspid area. And we put the brace on for 12 months and he's done. Okay, I mean, really easy. But most of the work was done with the appliance, right? And look at how nice the gingival margins ended up. I mean, that's so good. But again, how could you do this case with braces? You have to open the bite and you have to get rid of the anterior crossbite first. So braces don't get rid of anterior crossbites as easily as appliances. Because you're pushing on the bone, you're pushing on the teeth, and that really helps the gingival margins. But he was class one all the way. He was class one with just a simple little anterior crossbite. There's no way you should wait and have him look like that and maybe permanently damage the gingival margins when you can fix it at age eight with one little appliance and four buildups. You know, there's no way. That pay, that, those patients should be treated all the time. Easy, easy, easy. I would advise you, though, before you take an impression sent to Jeff, that you maybe want to get some records first. Because if anything goes wrong and that patient's upset with you and or they move away and the or someone on the other end doesn't like what you've been doing, the first thing they're going to ask for is your records and you better have good ones. And that's why nobody has ever taken my course, I can remember, in 35 years has ever been successfully sued because the records are fantastic. And usually if you take good records, you make the right diagnosis and do the right treatment. But again, you're going to need you're going to need ProTac to help you with those appliances. So I charged twenty five hundred for phase one, which is six months. Then I waited till all the permanent teeth are up, and I put the braces on for twelve months, and we charged them four thousand. And so the total fee was sixty five hundred, and the records are five hundred, and everybody's happy. And you know what? They thank you. I just wrote an article which I will send you. It's a it's a really good article, I think. And in the article I wrote, when was the last time a patient ever thanked you for a filling? Well, it's never happened to me. I mean, never have they happened for filling, but but ortho, they thank me all the time because I mean I did a great job for him. He's a confident guy from age eight on. He's very confident, smiling, he's happy. So again, we talk about I love Scott Manning's saying. Successful people do what unsuccessful people don't feel like doing. The next time you feel lazy and you don't feel like doing something to help your practice, why don't you just remember the saying, if you want to be successful, you better do something because unsuccessful people just want to coast. You don't want to coast. You want to be a leader. You want to be, you want to get help these children. If nobody else is doing it, you should be doing it because you're going to be busy if you do. We've got seven chairs here, seven chairs and two consoles and 11 staff, and we're cooking. We're cooking. It didn't happen the first week, and, and, and the key was to train and motivate my staff, and we can help you with that. My hygienist is a fantastic lecturer. She's got some great – she's got a great course. 
so far it's just a two day course, but we're gonna film two more days. But, and if we did a course in Vancouver, you can bring your staff to the first session at no charge. So the first session, I'm gonna be talking about early orthodontic treatment. I'm gonna be talking about records. And if the staff want to come to the first session, there's no charge. After that, if there's enough interest, we would bring my hygienist out and do a four-day course. So we can just decide what you want to do. But I think we're going to get a good turnout. And in, in, uh, there's so many people watching tonight that hopefully um, many of you will say, you know, I, I want to make this move. I, I want to help my practice. I want to help these kids. I can see where this is going to be a tremendous benefit. The other thing you might notice when you show this to your team several of them might have young children and they might say, wow, this looks fantastic for even helping my own kids. And they'll want to come to you and say, please make some appliances to help these kids, our kids. So you want to help their kids and you want to help the kid, the children you practice. Okay. So that's a really good case. There he is. Nice smile at the end. Now that's after phase one. So you can see his teeth are still a little crooked on the right-hand slide, but we got rid of that. He's, he started when he was probably seven and a half and finished when he was eight. Or three months later. That's three months later. Maybe he's eight the whole time. And there he is. Nice smile. Happy guy. Now, this is something which is really interesting. I mean, we, we've got to be up to date on what's going on. But the University of Toronto has announced it's increasing its enrollment by 10%. And I'm sure the other dental schools in Canada are doing the same. The dental schools in Ontario are increasing their enrollment of foreign dentists who pay approximately 100,000 a year. It might be, might be a little less, but it's a lot of money. They're paying a lot more than, than uh, if, you're, if you're a Canadian. And, and so, and older dentists like me are postponing retirement. I'm not postponing retirement because I'm, I'm, um, I'm worried about paying the bills. I'm postponing retirement because I really like what I do. And, and, and I had a great time today. I came to the office, I did, five or six final consults. Each final consult takes about an hour. And every single patient that I talked to uh, signed the financial agreements, the informed consent to start treatment. So that's fun for me because I know I'm gonna be helping six patients either get out of pain, stop their snoring, or end up with beautiful smiles and straight teeth and straight profiles. So it's just a great day. So I can play golf. I'm working two weeks now and taking two weeks off. So that's what I wanna do. That's my idea of a good life. Now, the Ontario reported that net incomes are going to be decreased by 25%. That's what they're that's what they're suggesting. And they actually said, be proactive. And 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 they recommended hiring consultants to help you with your practice. And of course, I'm saying be proactive and learn to offer orthodontic services to your patients. And corporate dentistry, you cannot not pay attention to what's going on around you. The smaller pharmacies are gone. When I graduated, they all had small pharmacies around. Now there's no small pharmacies. They're all the big ones. The small pharmacies are gone. They, they, only the big ones are surviving now. They're open seven days a week. Corporate dentistry is open seven days a week. They're offering all services, even ortho. But if you think that corporation of that office near me is, is my competition, you're wrong because there's no way someone that doesn't treat children is going to compete with me. And there's no way that an orthodontist that only goes there once a month and does Invisalign is going to be any competition. I mean, that's, that, that's not going to happen. And they wouldn't be a competition to you either. First of all, the Achilles heel of most orthodontists, not all, is TMD. So if I treat you, teach you how to treat a TMD case and how to stay out of trouble and how to refer the tough ones out, and pay attention. You know what's neat about TMD? Everything I do in orthodontics to treat the children with functional appliances, I apply to my TMD practice. In other words, if you get a deep overbite, erupt the posterior teeth. Hear that? Not intrude incisors. When I took an Invisalign course, it was all about intruding incisors to fix the deep overbite. That is not good for the TMJ. You have to extrude the posterior teeth. Okay, by putting buildups and extracting the teeth, whatever you have to do. Also, expanding the upper arch, making the upper arch wider, getting an airway. And the last thing would be to move the jaw forward when you're deficient. You got a large overjet, move the jaw forward 
with a twin block, if it's a large overjet or a Mara large overjet or slight overjet, you can use the, the carrier I showed you. Okay, you need to offer all services. These corporations are, mixed, are doing all services at lower fees. Of course, their dental supplies are discounts, their equipment's discount, they got marketing budgets. I mean, they are, they're in there to win. They're in there to take patients away from you. Well, you got to take, you got to make sure your patients don't leave. You've got to offer some services they're not offering. And if the door, there's someone in there doing 1940 orthodontics, they're no competition to you, I'll tell you. Okay. So there's going to be more and more dentists graduating. The fees are going to go lower and lower and lower. You're going to, you need to add new practices, service to your practice. And remember, 75% of the children have a malocclusion. There's all kinds of patients in your practice. You don't have to do any marketing. You have to market internally. And my opinion, it, it might be changing, but what I'm, what I'm hearing from my dentists, that most of the orthodontists they deal with are not treating children in the mixed dentition. Therefore, it's an excellent opportunity for general dentists to help treat these patients and increase their income as a result. So I highly recommend you, you watch this video and I appreciate you watching the video and, and show it to your team. Remember the lunch and learn, do the lunch and learn. You'll get a one hour C credit from Rondo Seminar. So just send in the names of the people that watched it and we'll send them a one hour credit. Um, and just check to see how they relate, relate to this. Check to see how they're feeling. One more case. Okay. This is uh, gold for you. She knows a lot. She's been with me 19 years, she tells me. So she can, she runs Rondo seminars and, and she knows all about the courses and all about the special rates and everything. I think soon the course will be up online. You'll be able to see it. But remember, we're starting in Vancouver in April and May and September, October. So we're giving the summer off. So, and each course has a manual 250 pages. So you need to read those manuals. You need to spend some time. This is, this is if, if an orthodontist goes to school for three years, I need eight days to get you doing the easy cases. Not all ortho, not surgery, just the easy cases. But I need a full eight days. I need you to read those manuals. And I need you to take good records and, and really get into it. You know, go big or go home. So I want you to do it right. Last case. The other thing we can do is the IEO, the International Association for Orthotics, has a, a program where we can, we can increase your credentials. So that's Edmund Liam, who's, who's one of my favorite dentists who lives in Vancouver. And he was going for his fellowship. So it was a ski trip. And he brought all his stuff in the ski trip. And I had to look at the, the cases, but I was happy to do it. And uh, so he did five cases and 300 hours of CE credits. And he got his fellowship through the International Association for Orthodontics. And um, my course, hundred I think it's 132 or 142 hours. So if you take that course, you take it online again, you're, you're getting close to 300. Last case. Okay, this is the daughter of one of my partners. She's eight years old and look at the crossbite. But what's really interesting, look at the prognathic, sorry, the retronathic maxilla. See how deficient the upper lip is? I honestly think if this patient was neglected and went to some orthodontic offices, the orthodontist would say, it's a pretty tough case. The lower jaw is growing like crazy. Maybe go for surgery. Not in all cases, but in some. Okay. So retronathic maxilla, normal mandible. Okay, there she is. Now, what you don't want to happen is you have to make a note of this. The lower jaw grows forward more than the upper jaw in mixed dentition. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to fix this as soon as you can. You want to create a deep overbite as soon as you can to control the grate of the lower jaw coming forward. Okay, so she's got a class three molar relationship and anterior crossbite. She should have been treated when she was earlier. But she's eight years old. That's not bad. And then that's a septometric x-ray, and that's the septometric tracing that you get from Protec. So Protec will trace your sepsis. Just take the x-ray, send it to them. They'll trace it and help you with the diagnosis. Um, so there she is. Now, if she can bite end-to-end, -end, this is really important. Can she actually go end-to-end? 
that's an easy case, and that can be treated with an anterior sagittal. If she cannot bite end to end, that means she doesn't have a functional class three, she's got a skeletal class three, and she should be treated with something bigger than the anterior sagittal. And we will cover it. Tandem appliance is what we use, and we can show you that in the course in session number three. We'll go over this anterior sagittal in session number three, too, if you sign up for the course. So again, you can't move those front teeth forward unless you open the bite. Again, I love the composite buildups. You'll be amazed what's going to happen in a minute. She's got a bit of a constricted arch, not quite enough room for that lateral, but not bad. The lower arch is perfect, no crowding. So the open divide, remember you've seen it in three different cases where we put composite buildups on the primary molars, okay? So we just do that. Or we could use occlusal pads, but remember if you put occlusal pads on, you have to take the appliance out to eat and you take it out for sports and it's not gonna work as efficiently as the, the buildups on the molars. So she wanted clear. So we put white ones on there, pick, pick a color, it doesn't matter. Pick something close to the tooth structure because remember it's going to stay on there. You're not going to take those off. You're establishing a new occlusal plane. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to move those front teeth forward and then we're going to grind them down a little bit to create a deep overbite. Okay, that's what we're doing in this case. Remember, you in a class three, you'll want to create a deep overbite to restrict the growth of the mandible forward in a growing patient. Okay. So again quite a difference very quickly. And you can see how that would make more room in the mouth for their tongue, for airway, for breathing, everything. So remember, I told you if you wanna increase an airway, you add buildups to the primary molars and you increase the airway. Okay, anterior crossbite, composite buildups. This is the neatest picture. This is the neatest thing. Look what happened here. The patient had a three millimeter anterior crossbite. All I did was build up the primary molars and the mandible rotated down and back. And now I'm like a class one. I was class three before with the mandible in front of the maxilla. And now the maxilla and mandible are lined up class one. It's unbelievable. All I did was open the vertical. Okay, so what's the, what's the rule here? The rule is very important. You got a class three skeletal case when the mandible is ahead of the maxilla and the maxilla is deficient, build up the teeth, fix the deep overbite by, by doing that with composite buildups, it's an easy case. The one you don't wanna treat is a class three skeleton with an open bite. So those cases will teach you to refer out. So Jeff will not let you treat those cases and I'll advise you not to treat them either. The other thing we have for you is we have virtual study clubs we're setting up now so you can sit in your own home and, and send cases to the virtual study club and we'll diagnose them for you and send them back. And you'll see many more cases of other dentists and we're gonna videotape all those too. And we also have live study clubs in Vancouver with Mike Lowry that you can sign up for after the course is over. So we've got some lots of options for you to help you when the course is over. So we're not gonna abandon you I also have level two courses you can take. I also have level two online courses to take, TMD courses, um, clear liner courses, um, snoring sleep apnea course. I mean, we've got lots of things to stimulate you and train you because I think the dentist of the future is going to have to know about ortho, TMD, and sleep. And then you'll be like me, you'll be bulletproof. You'll be recession proof because you'll be doing so, so, so many things that the other dentists aren't doing you'll be in demand and you'll be getting referrals. Okay, so let's go. There's the appliance. She picked sort of a pink pink one. And this, it's interesting, so here's a picture of the appliance with pads on it. And then I must've changed my mind and taken the pads off because she was treated without the pads. Here, the pads are gone. So the appliance was made with the pads and I said, no, no, that's wrong, take them off. I'm gonna change my mind, we're gonna do the buildups. So there she is again, the same thing. Um, the cut is always distal to the laterals. And we showed you why before. So again, in three months, it's corrected. I mean, remember she was end to end with just the buildups. All they did was move those front teeth forward a couple of millimeters by turning the screws twice a week and she's fixed. 
So very simple, but remember, she was class three. Her father's class three, the dentist friend of mine, my, my partner, and he is a strong lower jaw, Teddy. He's a, he's a class three and she's a class three. Her, her lower jaw is gonna grow more and we have to keep an eye. But look at that great profile. I mean, isn't that great? I mean, she looks fantastic. So I'm really pleased with that profile. And she really looks good. And, and that was easy. That was four buildups and turning the screws twice a week for maybe three months. That's it. Each, each turns a quarter of a millimeter and you get two millimeters a month. So that's it. Okay. So you can see now, I have been paying attention to this, the time at all, but maybe I'm a little over tonight. Am I? I think so. Okay. Anyway, I get all excited here. We're almost done. Again, look at the beautiful profile. Okay. Man rotated down and back, increase the vertical, beautiful profile. There she is again. Remember, we started with a deficient maxilla. Now we got a normal maxilla. We started with a crossbite, now no crossbite. So now all we do is wait till the permanent teeth erupt. So now the per in the right hand photo there, the permanent teeth erupted. Remember, we ground down the buildups so that we could get a deep over, but we could get the, the deep overbite to keep the mandible from coming forward too much. And then we put braces on for a year. When she's age 12, all her permanent teeth erupted. And that was really easy. There are the wires we used. And now she's all done. So she was what? Probably four to five months in, in the anterior sagittal. And she's 12 months in the braces. And what an easy way to do it. And that most of the work was done with that sagittal. Without Jeff's appliances, I could not practice. And you got to go with a lab that the appliances are going to fit. And you can phone them when there's a problem and ask them their advice on the design of the appliances because they're fantastic. But remember, I want you to do it first. You design it the way you think and then ask them for their advice. Don't get them to design it for you. You got to do your job and, and, and that's the way you're going to learn. Okay, so then there's that QCM retainer at the end like I showed you. And there's the Lingo Bonner retainer in the upper and lower so the teeth won't go crooked. And there's the QCM retainer and everything's wonderful. And there's it. Now she grew a little bit. You can see that she grew. Her lower jaw grew quite a bit. You can see there's a big difference there. But that's at the end of treatment. That's when she's 13. And so, I mean, really a good case. But the key was that anterior sagittal. So please, you got a case that's a that's an anterior crossbite. I want you to fix that. Okay. And there she's all done. Looks great. So no extraction, no surgery, easy case. But the sagittal and the buildups was the key. And there's the profile, looks so much better. And there's the numbers you get from Jeff. He'll do all that for you. We do teach you about that, but he'll do that for you. And we're all done. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it too. I'm getting hungry. I think I want to eat. So there's the final, final profile. And look at the difference in the upper lip, how full it is. And there she is. You think that she'd give me a better smile than that. But at least it's a better smile than the first one. So, Jeff, that's it. I showed your appliances. I love them. And um, you're the best. That's great. Certainly, thanks. thanks so much, Brock. Well, you're welcome. I, I'm so glad to have met you and so glad to have been working with your dentist for the last 25 years. I'm looking forward to the course in April. Yeah, we are too. Well, thank you. Um, for your time and thanks to everybody for attending tonight. I mean, I think that was a great overview of some of these uh, techniques in particular, some of those appliances towards the end there with the anterior crossbites, it shows you how a pretty simple device can have a pretty profound effect. Um, and you really do a great job of illustrating how, um, you know, what a difference it makes to use some of these simple appliances. Yep. Yeah, well. so yeah, that's great. So, um, and I'm going to work on that uh, two weeks on, two weeks off uh, system that you're uh, creating. So I try to check it out for myself. <laughs> That's right. You got to get <laughs> a little older. Deal. You're pretty young for that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so we're going to wrap it up here. And for those of you that are um, uh, viewing on the scheduled date of uh, March 23rd, we're going to try to um, carry on here and. Um, switch over to a live Q&A session with myself and Brock, if we can make that work. And uh, for those of you watching the recorded version, um, you can feel free to um, email in your questions to Lee, and Lee's um, email address was on the screen earlier, 
Uh, she's Lee at rondoseminars.com or to myself, if you'd like, jplayer at protechdental.com. And either, either of us would be happy to try to answer your uh, questions for you. Um, so thanks everybody for attending and we're gonna switch over to the Q&A session now.